Have you ever played a fighting game and wondered, why didn't this hit? In fighting games and lots of other games, interactions are really decided by invisible geometric shapes interacting with each other. Balrog's sprite making contact with Ryu's sprite doesn't decide whether Ryu got punched. This red box, called a hit box, didn't ever overlap with this green box, Ryu's hurt box, so the move didn't hit. If Balrog walks forward a bit, now he's close enough so that the hitbox will overlap with the hurtbox when he presses that same button, so the punch will connect. The colors used for the different boxes can differ by game, and some games might not use boxes at all, but the concept is always the same. There are shapes that are part of your character that can get hit, and then when you press buttons, other shapes appear that actually do the hitting. So you might be wondering, why would you make a game work like this? You could make a game where you have the collisions between the sprites or the 3D models dictate who hits who. But there are a bunch of different reasons why developers have taken the hitbox hurtbox route, and they all have to do with separating aesthetics and gameplay. In fighting games, if you tried to play using only visible hitboxes and hurtboxes, you'd have no idea what's going on. Here you can kinda see the hurtbox shift forward, and you can barely even see the hitbox because it's only on screen for two frames. If you look at the actual animation, it's easy. It looks like a powerful move that reaches pretty far, and that's exactly what Chun-Li's Stand Heavy Punch is. The hitboxes make the game function like you want it to, and then the character model's animations make the game understandable. Using hitboxes also means you can tweak game balance more easily. Chun-Li's Stand Light Kick was nerfed from this to this, so it'd be a less powerful anti-air. You can change the properties of the move without the time and expense of redoing animation from scratch. Different fighting games also have different hitbox philosophies. Having hurtboxes extend past hitboxes makes it easier to hit your opponent's outstretched limbs, which could make whiff punishing more important. Doing the opposite might make the game more aggressive. There isn't one right way to do it, but these differences contribute a lot to why different franchises feel distinct and unique. So you might be wondering, is any of this actually useful information? Plenty of people have one Evo having never seen a hitbox in their life. Like frame data, hitboxes are a tool that you can choose to use to research and problem solve if you personally find it useful. That being said, looking at hitboxes can help you better understand weird interactions you see during a match and understand how to take advantage of certain moves. For example, if you look at Soul's Grand Viper, the hurt box is super low to the ground when the move starts up. This shrunken hurt box means it beats lots of attacks by just going under them. People often refer to these as low profile attacks. If you look at Slayer's 2H, the animation doesn't really make it obvious what the move is for. Looking closer, you can see his hurt box actually shrinks upward to avoid low attacks, and it has a giant hitbox along the ground, so this move beats lows. Moves like this are called low crush moves. When Dragon Ball Fighters launched, people looked at Piccolo's hitboxes and noticed that the hitbox on his jump bell extended way past the hurt box, meaning it could beat a lot more stuff than you might think just based on the animation. Moves with disjointed hitboxes like this that extend way past the character's hurt box are sometimes called sword normals. These can be really strong moves that are hard to contest. So how do you actually see hitboxes? Some games have built-in ways to see them, which is the best case scenario. This is pretty rare, and you see it mostly in indie games. Lots of games, especially bigger budget fighters, don't have any official way to view them. Fortunately, more often than not, members of the community step up and find a way, usually through modding the PC version of the game. Since these mods aren't supported by the devs themselves, there can be issues where patches break the hitbox viewer, at least temporarily. Of course, you usually don't have to actually install the mod yourself or even own the PC version of the game to check them out. Content creators make videos compiling full move lists with the hitbox viewer turned on. You can track these videos down on YouTube or wherever else. Also, lots of times, fan-made wikis will have screenshots showing the hitboxes. People have also figured out ways to extract the hitbox data, which they can then put online. These sites can give you really granular control, allowing you to do things like advance a move frame by frame to look at exactly how hitboxes change over time. So what's the take-home message? 
Ignoring hitboxes completely is fine, but they can be a useful tool to better understand the game and why different interactions play out in a certain way, or they can help you find strong tools that you might have overlooked. Anyway, I hope you liked the video, and thanks for watching. I'm Zisu, and here's where you can find more of my stuff or support me. Catch you next time.